The year is distant in the future, and civilization is collapsing. As destruction rains down and our calls to Mega Man go unanswered, it must be asked, what great hero can protect us as the Blue Bomber slumbers? Well, the fine people at Domesticated Ant Games have heard our pleas and taken up the mantle valiantly in the shape of Kai and Gravity Circuits. I truly love this little red guy. He's kind of like if you smashed a Gundam and a ninja together and slapped them into a Mega Man game. And in case you've missed out on Mega Man or Rock Man as he's called in Japan, he's this cute little guy. Sometimes he's cooler, sometimes he's digital, but he's always blue and wants to do the right thing. You can think of him as the Sonic the Hedgehog of his universe. And every Sonic needs his shadow. That's this cool guy. Zero. And for every bit of this that is trying to be a successor to Mega Man X, I would love to ask the developers of Gravity Circuit what their favorite Mega Man game is, because I think they'd agree with me that it's something in the Zero series. Just like Zero, Kai prefers an up-close strategy with robot foes, but takes it a step further. He doesn't need any kind of weapon. He's happy with using his fists, and once he's destroyed an enemy, he can pick up their remains and chuck them at another enemy for high damage. Now, when I first saw this in trailers, I was convinced it wouldn't be a fun enough mechanic to carry the game, so I let this sit in my backlog for a while. And I'm so glad I was wrong. So on top of the fisticuffs, Kai has a grappling hook that a keen observer might notice looks very similar to Zero's chain rod. This acts as you might expect, getting you across gaps and hitting faraway objects but it can also be used as a weapon, and once you get in a flow of attacking an enemy, knowing when they're about to go down, grappling them, and then throwing their body at the nearest enemy for a one-hit kill, you never want to stop. They also use the grapple for some clever bits, like here, where you need to latch onto the moving track on the ceiling, then avoid the spikes by maneuvering up and down. There is a tutorial you can get to in the menu to teach you everything you need to know, but it's an optional choice, and I liked this because discovering the moveset on my own through the first couple of levels felt organic and rewarding, and there's a lot more here than meets the eye. So we got the grappling hook and sprints, and oh buddy, let me tell you, this is what every sprint should be. You just hold that left trigger and you're zipping through these levels. I appreciate when a game just lets you go fast, and he is so responsive. It feels great to be able to stop on a dime from a full sprint and adjust for platforming. And we'll get to it soon, but this is a true platformer in every sense and will test your reflexes. Which, as someone who finds a lot of 2D action adventures lacking in the platforming challenges, I found this to be a welcome surprise. It's going to be hard to work around spoilers here, because like most Mega Man games, you have an intro stage, and then you're given eight themed bosses who levels represent them. You can choose to do these in any order, which means your first set of bosses may be my last. This is something I have always loved from the Mega Man series. It allows a sense of freedom, giving you a way to play in any order you want also has the effect of letting someone who can't beat the bosses still see most of the content in the game. Plus, while you're moving through the levels, you have a lot of opportunities to upgrade your character, which makes coming back later an easier proposition. I won't show you the end game, but I'm going to present bits of the eight main levels, and let me tell you, these are full of surprises. This is the kind of level design that makes me so interested in mechanics-based video games. It's antagonistic, but like, in the best way, if that makes sense. They do a good job of being difficult but fair. There's so many times where I'd think I was in the clear, and then an enemy would pop out and eat into my health. I never felt screwed over just momentarily outsmarted by a level designer who knew exactly what height to make a jump or where to place a trap to mess with my timing. And while these are linear levels, there are secrets all over the friggin' place. Aside from your general currency, throughout a level, you're trying to find containers to raise your max health or energy, rescue eight civilians, and discover a color palette chip. Civilians you save turn into tokens for you to buy passive upgrades like a double jump, gaining a protective aura, a quick emergency heal, and up to 17 others of which you can equip three at a time. I love saving civilians here as opposed to Mega Man X, where you're kept distant from possible harm to humans. 
Like, I know it's small, but seeing these little guys running away from travesty instead of just seeing cars whizzing by adds to the stakes, in my opinion. And we're still not done with Kai's moveset. You got the palette chips that give you new colors, and each comes with a different rad ability. But I kind of only used the standard heroic red, because I thought it looked the sharpest and I care about fashion and video games a lot more than I should. What are you gonna do? And lastly, you have burst chips, which use your energy bar and are basically active abilities. My favorites were this pile drive, the hyper beam, and an emergency heal that was mega helpful in the endgame. As for visual design, I really love these muted colors. It feels like somewhere between Game Boy Color and 16-bit Super Nintendo stuff. There's some standard levels here, but every boss is engaging and some of these levels are absolutely inspired. When I saw it was time for a warehouse level, I honestly said, alright, let's get this over with. Because, I don't know, it's like a factory level, we've seen this before. And then a minute or so into the level, everything changed. I mean, look how rad this is! You're all of a sudden in cyberspace. The platforms are invisible until you get close, and you're forced to be more methodical, especially with some of the platforms actually being traps. It's gorgeous to look at, and when you fail at a trap, the boss will teleport in for a second snicker at you. This game is so dang charming. This is very much like Shovel Knight's edgier cousin. It's cooler, and takes itself more seriously, but still has a sense of humor. Like this other boss whose whole theme is music and an audience comes in to watch the fight when you enter the arena. Then she has these music waveforms for you to dodge. It's equal parts beautiful and exhilarating. And the hub area is another thing that reminds me of Mega Man Zero, where you have a growing cast of characters joining to fill out the lore. And here they aren't outright hilarious, but they're amusing. And while the story is really just a vehicle to get you back into the action, it has enough depth to support a lot more if they ever choose to dive further into these characters. And I really hope they do. I want a whole series. I want more of this. I want 3D Gravity Circuit Legacy. I want their take on Battle Network. God, I want a Kai plushie. He says scrap as a curse, and when you're low on health, you grab your arm like you're Vegeta or something. How cute is that? I just trust this team wholeheartedly now. I feel like I'm having that experience a lot of people had with The Messenger in 2018. It's a great game, but I just didn't have that feeling. This time, I do. Gravity Circuit seems playtested to death, which checks out for a game that was a decade in development, so it's a bit difficult to poke holes. I'd say that playing on hard is satisfying and preferred for me as a longtime fan of the genre, but you should expect a wicked difficulty spike in the endgame. The game is pretty generous most of the time, no instant death spikes or pits, and they'll place you super close to where you fell with a minor health thing. But bosses are aggressive and can be fairly tough, and if you want to make it easier by filling your energy bar before a fight, you have to use your main currency. Each time you do so, the price goes up until a cap of 500, so if you're really struggling, you might start to gouge into your money, and that's a poor get poorer type of thing that I don't love. There's also a couple of cheeky little crouches you have to do sometimes with questionable hitboxes, and I wish there were a few more enemy types, but I never got tired of anything. This all just goes down so smoothly, to be honest, I'm just scraping the bottom of the barrel here. The music? You've been listening to the entire time. It's all done by Dominic Ninmark, who you might know from doing tons of remixes of video game tracks. This is just a stellar soundtrack that I even listened to while playing another Mega Man inspired game called 30XX, and it felt perfectly at home. It's pretty much an ideal score for this kind of game. I don't know. Playing Gravity Circuit just felt like Christmas coming early. This is my comfort food, and I'll definitely be coming back to this over and over through the years. This is the kind of brilliant pacing and level design you should expect from seasoned veterans, not new developers like this. I'm kind of baffled that the indie crowd isn't tripping over themselves to talk about this game. This should be in the same conversation as Shovel Knight. But for now, it seems to be joining an ever-growing pile of neglected games that I think should be considered genre greats. Thank you for watching my first video essay. I'm going to be doing more of these, and I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, all the normal shenanigans mean the world. Like, comment, subscribe, and share it with cool people. 
You can also support me by joining my Patreon or by sending a one-time donation over Ko-fi, both of which are linked in the descriptions. See you in the next video! Oh look, 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 look! He freezes when he's going through the doors! He's just like Mega Man for real!